Hello, Rossoneri, welcome to a new episode. This is uh, AC Milan Talk. We are ready for our first April installment with uh, new performances and new fixtures to discuss as always. But first of all, let me say hello to my two guests. Uh, welcome to Adriano Del Monte. How are you, Adriano? I'm very well, Licia. Lovely <laughs> to see you as always. And welcome also to Sheridan Bird. <laughs> hello there, Licia. Hello, Adriano. Welcome back. It's, it's wonderful to be back to see your faces again. I'm really excited about today's episode. So uh, we have uh, to say that uh, it's a very tough period for our club, especially for Stefano Pioli's lads. So let's start with our men's first team. Plenty of emotions and plenty of meaning. Uh, we came back from the international break with a hard fought and a very important 2 1 win against Fiorentina on 30. Serie A match day. Adriano. Important. It was the start of this tough period that you mentioned, but very, very, very important because we know that Fiorentina were always going to be a very difficult opponent, but to go away from home and to put in that performance and obviously take the lead, Fiorentina then equalising, but then to go on. Get the win and seed out. That is a really, really telling performance and the three points certainly deserved. And now we go into the business end of the season and in a very, very nice place here, Sheridan. Look at that now. Second, obviously, hopefully can close that gap on the league leaders there. But clear of Juventus there in third. We know how important those top spots are in the lead up to next season, European football and everything that comes with it. So, so much football to come. I know we'll be previewing it, but this performance, Sheridan, was a very, very good one. After a tight first half, coming away with the three points, very, very pleasing. Uh, it was very interesting also because the three goals scored uh, came in the first eight minutes of the second half, Sheridan. Yeah, it was a tough match. Fiorentina are, are a team that are really hard to beat and Milan needed to show some real quality to get the three points. Uh, they're a side that perhaps don't get too many headlines, Fiorentina, perhaps not mm. massively spectacular in the way they play under Vincenzo Italiano, their they're very highly rated uh, manager or head coach if you prefer. But they are a, a tough team to break down and as we're recording this, they've got one foot in the Coppa Italia final. So uh, they've obviously got quality there and Milan had to show some real character, had to dig deep, had to show some, uh, some reserves of energy, mental strength, physical strength and some class to get the three points and it's a really good run that the side are in now. And after the 90 minutes on the pitch we had uh, our head coach Stefano Pioli's post-match reactions with, with Milan TV cameras. Let's listen. La squadra è cresciuta tanto, abbiamo cambiato tanto, c'è stato un necessario un po' di tempo per conoscere i giocatori nuovi, loro per conoscere me, per conoscere i compagni. Adesso sicuramente siamo una squadra, siamo una squadra vera, siamo una squadra forte, poi dopo il campionato italiano è difficile, l'Europa League sarà difficilissima perché la Roma è forte, gioca bene, però insomma vogliamo continuare questo momento positivo più a lungo possibile e provare a portarlo avanti fino, fino a fine stagione. Io mi sono sempre spesso in, in in questi termini sul gruppo perché è un gruppo che si è formato velocemente dove si aiutano, si stimano, si, si incitano quando, si, quando ci sono delle critiche lo fanno per, per cercare di crescere quindi è un gruppo che e Rafa sta facendo una crescita non solamente dal punto di vista tecnico, tattico, fisico anche una crescita di, di partecipazione che che credo che lo farà diventare quel campione che che può, che può essere per le qualità che ha. The week after the international break could be always a tricky one, but the Rossoneri kept uh, the good run uh, of wins going. Uh, but considering the start, the beginning of this 2024, it hasn't been a bad period at all for us, uh, because we collected 14 victories in 16 matches with 38 goals. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Not, Not, bad. Bad. Not, Not bad. bad. Look, it, it puts smiles on the faces of Milan fans, of course. As Mr. Pioli said there, and we recall, we discussed it at the start of the season, but so many new players coming into this squad, it was always going to take time. But look at that record there, 18 matches, 14 wins and 38 goals scored. You do some quick maths there. <laughs> <laughs> it's only two goals a game. Look, there's been 
improvements across the park and that's been the the exciting factor here for Mr Pioli and this Milan team we know earlier in the season there were a couple of periods where the form wasn't as consistent as we've seen now but we really feel and we discussed it last week Leecher these players coming in off the back of very positive individual international breaks if they could bring that into this match against Fiorentina now what's to come this is going to be a red hot Milan team to close out the season Coach Pioli also commented on uh, Rafa Leao's performance. Uh, Leao um, scored the winner and uh, became the MVP from the game against Fiorentina, Sheridan. His timing is impeccable, Rafa Leao. Uh, we within Milan never criticised Rafa Leao at the beginning of the season. Other voices did, but we ignore that. But he was always consistent in uh, creating goals for others. But now he's, uh, he's starting to make a real impact, including key goals like this one in Florence and it's the perfect time to spring into form and it's uh, just great for the team it's great for the fans I'm sure Portuguese fans are very excited too with international football taking center stage in the summer but it's uh, as I say his timing is wonderful we've always known about his quality we perhaps hoped that he could have scored a few more well he started to find the net regularly now and uh, the surfboard celebration is back surfs up as they say and it's just a wonderful thing his timing is uh, is a, a boost for anyone connected with the Rossoneri. And I just add, Sheridan, the, the numbers are great, no mm -hmm. doubt about that, but it's what he does to bring his teammates into the game as well, which aren't always reflected in highlights like goals like that, which we know there are so many of. But Rafa Leal, we've said it many times, at his best, certainly one of the world's best. And there's no doubt about that. Even the goal at the weekend against Fiorentina, if you watch that back, watching that live, that takes absolute class, composure and quality, which not too many players on the planet possess. So Rafa Leal, super important to this team, we know that. But when he's at his best, there are numbers there which, although they were impressive, they're not reflected in the impact that he has on some of his teammates who are now performing at a very high level as well. And a little uh, Instagram treasure, also uh, um, always about uh, Rafa Leal, because digging into AC Milan profile, there is a, a gift for him, a gift that he worn also during the match uh, at the Franchi. And uh, uh, this uh, wristband uh, maybe uh, is uh, Rafa's new lucky charm. Had you seen it? It was beautiful. I did see it. <laughs> I hope you saw it, Sheridan. It was very beautiful. It was one of the, the boys in the lead up to the match yeah. who was walking out with the players who passed him the, the wristband. And Rafa said it, he felt positive about it. He felt that it would bring him some luck. and. Well, it did. He continued to perform at the level we've seen. So it was a beautiful story, a beautiful side note to a very nice yeah, performance. Lo long may it last. I hope he keeps it on in the shower when he's <laughs> eating, you know, <laughs> if he goes to the swimming pool, if he goes to the beach. Don't take it off, Rafa, please. <laughs> But let's keep scrolling on Instagram because Rafael Leao, after the 90 minutes on the pitch, shared a post a photo with himself and Samuel Chukwed. They celebrated together on their social media profiles because we have to say that also our number 21 played a great game, Sheridan. He was fabulous. He, he showed real energy, really good direct running, really um, positive dribbling, and it was just good to see. It's, uh, it's very important to have good players across all departments of the squad, players who are growing, players who are getting to know Serie A, getting to know Calcio, and his impact was very, very important. And he seems to be having fun. Those photos show that he's having a bit of fun on, on Raphael's giant surfboard, you could say. And if you have fun at work, you, you express yourself better. And as I say before, it's all so positive with the important, really important part of the season upon us. What about uh, Chukwueze's performance, Adriano? Big, big fan of Tukuese. I, I covered his uh, career also before coming to Milan while he was with Villarreal. If we recall, Villarreal had a very deep run in the UEFA Champions League one season. They made the semi-final. Tukuese scored a late winner at Bayern Munich to eliminate them. This is a player who has performed at the very highest level. And like all of the new signings, it was always going to take a little bit of time to adapt to a new country, a new league, new surroundings, new language, new everything that comes with it. And I've got no doubt in the quality of this player. And great to see him linking up with Rafa Leao and enjoying himself here in this city because this player can be an integral part of Milan's future, I have no doubt. And many Rossoneri teammates proud of Samuel Chukwueze, not only for his most recent performance, but also for his time with the Rossoneri. Among these teammates is Alessandro Florenzi. Let's listen. Oggi ha fatto una partita importante, eh? Eh, non solo sotto l'aspetto offensivo, ma anche 
sotto, sotto l'aspetto difensivo perché comunque mandando Rafa sul centrale e loro scalavamo tanto con Reinders a sinistra e se lui non dava una mano era, era, era un problema insomma quindi ha fatto una, una buonissima partita ma a Ciuco lo sappiamo le, le, quali sono le sue qualità sappiamo quello che, quello che può dare a questa squadra è ovvio che ci sono, ci sono giocatori che hanno bisogno di un giorno di adattamento e altri giocatori che hanno magari bisogno di mesi di adattamento speriamo che insomma il suo sia finito eh, perché noi vogliamo vedere questo Samu But let's change topic because April sees uh, the start of the final run to the finish line of this season. Uh, the stakes are growing ever higher and our Rossoneri have many important uh, fixtures ahead of them to determine the outcome. But this month schedule in detail because this weekend against Lecce, then uh, it's uh, Europa League uh, time. But between the first and the second leg against Roma, away to Sassuolo for Syria, And after the European period, it's Derby della Madonnina time. And finally, away in Torino to face Juventus. So make of that what you will. It doesn't get much bigger than that. <laughs> Very exciting, but this is why we love football, because it's, it's these months when you've progressed deep into competitions, you're still alive, mm -hmm. there's so much to play for. And let's not disregard the trip to Sassuolo as well, of course. A trip to Sassuolo brings back good memories from a couple of seasons ago winning the Scudetto there on the final match day. So, look, these are the big matches. Obviously, a derby della Madonnina there, a trip to Juventus, quarterfinals in European football. So much on the line, but as we've said, with a, a team nearing full strength, full of confidence, looking good, playing well, scoring goals. It's, uh, look, their, their form is, is ready for a difficult period like this. Yeah, I agree. I think you want to get to April with lots of important matches because if you haven't, it means something has gone wrong. It means in many um, aspects the season has been a failure. They train hard to peak at this time of the season, professional sports teams, and it's a good sign if you've got tough, demanding matches. The two matches against Roma, which we will discuss obviously a little bit further on in the future, will be fantastic. The match against Juventus is always special. The derby is going to have a... a, a particular flavor this year. Um, also, there are the matches against Lecce, who played a bit of a, a, a trick on uh, Milan earlier on in the season. The game against Sassuolo as well. Sassuolo are struggling this year, but they do have quality. So it's going to be a, a really important time to focus, to try and keep everybody fit, squad rotation. But I think most of all, to enjoy it, because the reason these players become professional footballers is so they can have high pressure football matches. It's what they love, it's what they do well. Next up will be Lecce and the Rossoneri will uh, be back uh, uh, at San Siro. But what about Gorci's side? Because we collected some numbers, some stats. Uh, 29 points for them, 26 goals scored versus 45 conceded. There's been a change at Lecce recently mm. in terms of uh, on, the, on the bench and we know that this is a Lecce side who have been slightly improved in the last couple of fixtures. They held Roma to a goalless draw recently And as you touched on, Sheridan, earlier in the season, this match here, it was a 2-2. So this is a team that certainly must be respected, a team that, are, well, they're, they're, they need points for other reasons at, at their end of the table at this delicate stage of the campaign. So won't be easy, but of course now this is the first match of this busy period in April ahead. Saturday, San Siro, we are confident that what we've seen from the boys in recent weeks will, will hold them in good stead, but a Lecce team that of course must be respected as each and every opponent should be in Serie A. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, and it's not disrespectful to say that Milan in this form at San Siro should have too much for Lecce. This match though demonstrated that football isn't scripted. Milan lost a two goal lead to the team mm. from Puglia, so funny things do happen. But I just uh, get that feeling from looking at Mr Pioli's eyes that he is focused, his squad are focused, and no more missteps uh, you know, on the horizon for Milan. And I just think it's a, a chance also for the uh, fringe players to get in, make an impact, and maybe uh, stake their claim to be starters. So I'm expecting a good performance against Lecce. No one is going to be underestimated. But four players and just one award. Christian Pulisic, Teo Hernandez, Noah for and Rafa Leao were running uh, uh, to be named uh, uh, Rossoneri MVP of March 2024, but the winner was our number 10. Your vote, do you agree? I agree, I agree. <laughs> we, there's been a lot of love from us for, for all of those players, but for the reasons we discussed earlier in the program, 
with the impact Liao has had on the pitch in terms of his numbers, but also in terms of his teammates as well, he is the MVP. And when he's at his best, Milan are at their best. And I think he's a deserved winner. Well, I would like to give it to the left wing, the left mm -hmm. flank, to Teo and to Rafa. So if we can have most valuable players, mo or most yeah, or most valuable wing, because uh, Rafa Leao has been fantastic too. But Teo Hernandez this season has really had to assume responsibility because of various injuries earlier on in the uh, in this year. He played in central defence and looked like a veteran. So um, I'm not taking anything away from Rafa Leao, but I'm saying let's extend it to the, the left flank. And, uh, and, and just pay tribute to what they've been doing because in, a, in attack, they really are devastating. And Teao's defensive contribution this season has gone up a notch. That's all for Stefano Pioli's Let's, uh, so let's move on with our women's team. The Rossonero beat Como, the match ended 4-1. Vigilucci and Domping once again on the score sheet, but also Emily Laurent, who with a brace, gave AC Milan their second consecutive win in the second phase of the season. Another really good performance. We've discussed it so many times that we don't want to be playing in this part of the table, but we have to accept that Milan are with the teams that are flirting with relegation. So you accept it, you deal with it, and you make the best of it. And they are certainly doing that. Mr. Cortis' side were really good against Como women. Four goals, could have been more, should have been more, but the performances were fabulous. So as you say, Laurent scored two goals. Really good impact by her. Chantet Dompig is playing really wonderful football. All round, the defence looks solid and it was just a really good performance. So make the most of the situation you're in because you, you can't change that. And they're certainly doing this. And this was um, a lovely precise finish, no chance for the keeper. And that set the tone for the match. Um, and it was just, uh, just another indication of what we, we already know and Adriano knows it. We, we discussed it is that <coughs> Milan are better than the majority of the sides they're playing against currently in this part of the championship. But um, you have to demonstrate that you can't play on reputation, you can't play on names or, uh, or theories, you have to show it on the pitch. And uh, look at this from Vigilucci, have a look at this Adriano. Very nice. You're not going to stop that, it was right unstoppable. into... Unstoppable. Unstoppable, right into the bottom corner and that put Milan back into the uh, deserved lead. And then um, Emeline uh, Laurent came on and uh, produced some magic, another chance to see this half volley, the keeper could not get there. But this is the Milan that we wanted to see at the beginning of the season, a lovely cross by a Camilla and swift turn, and an amazing finish. There's no way, you know, there's no other way to put it. A really good hard finish into the bottom near corner. I nearly crashed into that pylon, but they were okay. And this, this is what we want every week, but we want this against the uh, so-called higher echelon teams as well. We don't want to just watch this kind of football against the strugglers. And there is the quality to uh, next season to carry this on, hopefully. And I, I believe that the team can do so much better. But unfortunately, Christy Grimshaw's injury doesn't allow us to fully enjoy this uh, win, Sheridan. Yeah, I would say it was the only negative mark of a, a good um, afternoon of football was an injury for Christy Grimshaw, the Scottish midfield dynamo. I think everyone knows that I'm a fan of uh, Christy and she's had bad luck with injuries this season. We wish her a, a rapid recovery. Uh, she's a lovely person. I've been lucky enough to meet her a few times. And I think everyone that's connected with uh, Milan, Milan women and the fans as well know what a nice person she is, what a leader she is. So we really do uh, hope a, uh, or wish for a speedy recovery for Christy. And Adriano, next up uh, will be uh, on Sunday, 40 April, at the Wismara Puma House of Football is Napoli. Another weekend, another opportunity to continue this form. Firstly, echoing Sheridan's words, wishing Christy a very, very speedy recovery. But the action continues and it will provide an opportunity for someone else to come in and, and try to make their mark as well. Now, another winnable match against Napoli. I've said it every week since the split in the table, but these are all winnable. And really, this mm -hmm. Milan team, are good enough to go through the season winning all of these fixtures. Now, an Napoli team who picked up a very important win because they are in the, in the battle for relegation last time out against Sampdoria. They'll come in with some confidence, which will provide a very nice test. But what we saw last weekend uh, against Cornwall, I think this is a Milan team who they're scoring now. They're playing some really free-flowing, exciting attacking football. I think they've hit their straps and I think uh, another big win is on the cards. So keep it up, girls, and now let's move on with our under-19s. A 
A goal from Camardia sealed the second consecutive win for the Rossoneri in the league. Three vital points. Very, very much so. And I hope a, a Camarda winner against Juventus is something we hear for many, many, many years to come at all levels for this club. But look, we know that it's been, it's very tight up the top of the table. Juventus are a mid-table team in the Primavera, but to, to go away, to go and get the win for Camarda to, to get that goal, Wonderful, wonderful preparations ahead of what's to come. Still some distance there between the chasing pack, but as you can tell, obviously shared in those three points, really vital to maintain the pace with the leaders there. The top six at the end of the season break off into the, the playoffs for the Primavera. So really crucial three points. And that man, Kamada, once again. And this month of April uh, gets uh, therefore underway in the best possible way, we can say. Yeah, it was, it was a really important match because Juventus played a very defensive, uh, compact game and they were almost didn't appear to be the home team. And the reason I think it's important is that it, was, it felt like a European match. This is Francesco Camarda's goal, a really good corner routine. It was flicked on by a, a teammate who uh, escapes me at the moment, but it was flicked on and it was nodded in like a predator, like a poacher, no one there keeping an eye on Francesco Camarda, which surprised me a bit. I would have thought that Juventus would have been aware of uh, one of the best strikers, young strikers in European football, but they weren't. But uh, Juventus played a very cautious defensive style and that will actually help Milan preparing for the UEFA Youth League because they were not giving, um, they were not giving Milan anything. And it was uh, only when they went to goal down that the Bianco Neri started to attack a bit more and give the defence something to think about. So it was um, an unusual approach by Paolo Montero's Juventus, a good lesson for Milan, but most importantly, the, the three points for Mr. Abate's side and another goal for, uh, for Francesco Camarda. And uh, the Primavera will be back uh, on uh, Monday, 8 April, uh, when our Rossoneri will uh, face uh, uh, Sampdoria in uh, Genova. So what we should expect from uh, this new clash, Adriano? Well, these, uh, the Sampdoria clash and then the one following are the two final matches before that UEFA mm -hmm. Youth League Final yeah. Four, which we are very excited about, but we are focused on what's to come. They're two winnable matches. They will be used, I presume, by Mr. Abate as preparation, though, for the final four. So a couple of weeks to go, a trip away from home to Sampdoria won't be easy. But again, what we've seen, these improved consistent performances. And as we always say now, a, a team that are back to, to full strength, given the first team are back at full strength, I think we, we're going to see these performances continue. But one eye certainly on the middle of April with the UEFA Youth League final four to come. That's all for today. We come to the end of this uh, episode. They will be back uh, for a new episode on Tuesday for a comment on Serie A performance against Lecce, but especially for the European preview against Roma. Let me say thank you to my two guests. Uh, thanks to Adriano Del Monte. Thank you, Lecce. A lot of fun as always. And thanks to Sherry Bird. Thank you. Wonderful to be back. And I'm already looking forward to the next episode. See you next week, guys. And dear Rossoneri, that's all uh, for today. Thanks for following us. See you again, uh, as always, on AC Minal Talk. Ciao.